Hello, in this video I'm going to be going through how I create isometric landscape Photoshop renderings. So first I'm going to start off by using a SketchUp view in isometric and I have different layers of different views with black and white and color tones. So here I'm bringing in my textures of concrete which I'm going to cover over the 3D model of the walls. And I'm just going to go through with my magic wand and my lasso to select the top part because I want to fill in the same angle and texture on all the top facing areas. So here I'm using the stamp tool referencing the concrete uh, that I brought in and I'm just stamp and pasting that onto the selected areas. And now I'm selecting the side facing areas of the walls and I'm going to do the same thing with the stamp tool or clone tool and copy from the concrete texture and place it there. So now I'm using the dodge and burn tool so the burn makes it darker, the dodge makes it lighter. This is a great way to shade uh, parts of your Photoshop rendering. And it creates a good sense of three dimensionality with pretty minimal effort and it adds a nice touch. So here I'm just continuing to fill in the retaining walls uh, as they are. And now I'm gonna fill in the ground plane, which is a concrete paving. I'm just using the stamp tool really quick, easy, and effective way to fill in large areas. So here you can see my different layers, and that's a really effective way so you can still work with the line weight and keep that in your Photoshop running, but you can also reference the colors with the magic wand tool and such. So here I'm taking a image of a hot tub and then placing it into the, where the hot tub is in the rendering, just kind of fixing the perspective with the distort tool on the transform. And here I am going to be placing the fence, uh, the fencing along where the fence is on the 3D model, and just making sure I'm aligning all the, the panels on the wood. And I'm going to merge them all into one layer and then delete where that material is not supposed to be. Now I'm going to also extend that fence post there. And then I'm also going to delete it in the area where the landscape is, just using the lasso tool. Then adjust the color with some dodge and burn, maybe alter the saturation a bit. This will be done later when everything is there. So I'm also going to do the coping around the hot tub, same technique using the magic wand and then cleaning up the selection with the lasso tool, uh, filling out the clone stamp and then dodge and burning to get a little bit more <clears throat> three-dimensionality to it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a texture to fill in the ground plane of the landscaping. So all this green area, I'm going to select with a magic wand in the lasso tool and then fill in with a texture that I found. So this is just kind of a grass, it's a base for the rendering. It's not really necessarily designed or anything, it's just meant to be a base at which uh, it'll look better than just, just a plain flat green color. I'll bring it more to life. And here I'm going to correct some concrete work that I missed in the SketchUp model. So just using the lasso tool and coming back in with the clone stamp. And then what I'm going to do now is use a stamp uh, selection, which is in the shape of a grass. You can download these online. Just search like stamp tool grass brush sets or something like that on the internet and you'll be able to find downloads for these resources. You can also make them yourself. But what I'm doing is I'm softening up the edges, especially where the grass would be obstructing those sharp edges. This just makes it look more real and is much better than just a clean, flat line. This will help with your overall rendering aesthetic and you should apply this technique to uh, the, throughout the rendering, not just for the ground plane. Now I'm doing the same with even larger grass shapes, kind of breaking it up a bit so it's not just reading as flat, so it's more like clumping, mounding grasses. And here I'm bringing in a row of palm trees. 
and bring the design all together. And what you want to do in rendering is you don't want everything to look like it's a copy. You want to bring some variation between the palms. What I'm doing here is I'm switching the trunk, rotating the palm, so not all of them are exactly identical. So I'm rotating the palm so I get the shadow. All the shadows on the trunk are facing the correct side, so it looks like the lighting is actually realistic. And how I'm having the lighting from here is it's coming from the right side and then casting towards the left. So I'm going to do everything in the rendering in that fashion. So you can see that with the, uh, the hot tub, there's a dark line where it would be if the light was also facing the same way as the palm trees. So I'm here I'm bringing in a larger palm tree, a Caryota Gigas. And this one, you notice I squatted it down a little bit lower fix the perspective since this is a isometric you're kind of looking from the top and once again fixing the uh, shading of it so it's facing a dark side on the left light side on the right you can also do this with dodge and burn to make it look a, bit, a little bit more realistic so now we're going to bring in some of the mid-story uh, planting elements some dorianthus lilies here um, and you can what i do how I said I like to make things look not like they're all copied. I like to do some alterations on these plants. So what I did is I cut off the flower with the lasso tool, cut, selected it, then cut it, and then warped it a bit to make it look a little bit different, tilted it. This, it's just these little touches, they add a lot to the rendering and make it feel more realistic because plants are things that are very natural and don't look all identical. If you're bringing in some other plants, just filling in as I need. This is very good. This is part of the design process where you kind of put things where they look best. It doesn't have to be exactly per your design plan. So you're bringing in some ground plane stuff. Here I do a mix of clone stamping and also just copying the PNG cutout of the plant that I made myself from a photo. Just filling in, also obstructing the, the stuff that it would be in front of, so it's overlapping, giving that sense of uh, three-dimensionality and reality. So you're bringing in some more of that Senecio ground cover. Copying it there and there, and then clone stamping to fill in the smaller spots. The clone stamp is just a really quick way to do these renderings. And here's an Acacia Cognata Cousin It bring it in, even add more three-dimensionality here. And see there, I was deleting part of the trunk of the Caryota to make it so it is overlapping. Bringing more Doranthus, and flipping them horizontally so they're different, then shading them, I'll be doing later. See there, I deleted the, the acacia so it's not overlapping on the concrete. Also, just erasing the edges of things so it's not so it feels like it's rounded. It's easy with things like these shrubs because they, no matter which way you delete them, they can kind of fit any shape and be manipulated. So here, I'm just going through and dodge and burning some of the plants to make them feel more realistic in the space that they're in. And this is different for every single rendering. The dodge and burn tool, I can't recommend it more. Just practice that and play with it. It's a great tool for making things look super realistic. So you're bringing in some cactus, doing some color corrections with the saturation. You want everything to feel as if it's one photo one image taken at the same time. If something doesn't look right, it's gonna stick out. So really play with your colors, make sure everything looks like it has similar lighting and similar saturation, all that. So that's one of the problems with this, with using images of plants is that they were taken at different times with different cameras and you want everything to match as best as possible. You're doing some more with the Dorianthus flower. Now I'm going to try to fill in this, these last parts of the planting area. We've got a bird of paradise. I'll bring them in. These ones are a little tricky because they got this arched 
trunk, but what I can do is cut that arch off with the lasso tool and cut, and then warp it a bit. So you can really edit these however you want. I'm gonna bring in some smaller Birds of Paradise. Do some color correction, make it match a little bit better with the ones already brought in, so it looks like the sim similar or same plant. It's a smaller bird of paradise, real bird of paradise. And just putting that at the base of it to block out the base of the plant so it looks a little bit more real. And here I'm gonna bring in some plants for the area around the hot tub. This part was a little tricky because I didn't want to obstruct what was going on behind it. I was originally gonna put this bamboo in, but it would have obstructed too much of the pathway. One way to get by, get by with that is to lower the opacity on the plants in the foreground. So here I'm going to bring in the tree ferns. So do a tree fern, four of them around this hot tub. Be a real cool canopy. Nice space, create nice and intimate area. And then do planting around that. So here I'm doing the lasso tool delete some of the leaves that don't really aren't necessary, then also doing some warping to make it fit the perspective in that spot. So all these tree ferns are kind of leaning into the hot tub, so I want that to look like they're all there, so every single one is kind of leaning inward, creating that canopy. Then also lowering the opacity on the ones closest to us, gives some visibility to the hot tub. So now I'm going to add some shadows. So how I had the shadows is I select the outline of the, the plant itself and then I infill that on a separate layer below it with a black and then lower the opacity. Uh, this can be done in many different ways but this is how I do it. And then merging all those layers and then see here I'm fitting the shadow onto the step so when a shadow casts on a step it's going to be different than if it were casting on one plant. So there are three different plants, you want to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. Just think of how this would actually look in reality as opposed to just on a flat 2D thing. And these are the steps that really make it stick out as something realistic. So once again doing the same thing with the palms, making it look like it's wrapping over the fence. It's going to pop that off and it's going to make it look like it's a three-dimensional thing and also add the flat shadow cast on whatever ground plane that is in the background just adds another it's again sense of depth and three-dimensionality so here what i'm going to do is clean up the ground plane and put a black almost like a section cut through that side just to ground it and make that bottom a little bit heavier really hold that graphic down and here I'm fixing up some of the grass where there was a fence in the foreground before in the SketchUp model and covering areas that don't need to be seen in white. And going back through and playing with some dodge and burn in various areas. And then now I'm going to add in just some shrubs to fill in this planting area. And as I place the plants, I want to make sure they're all fitting in the space. So I'm warping, distorting them, rotating them, and also uh, dodge and burn. So dodging on the, the side that's facing the light and then burning on the side that's facing the dark. And adding another shrub here, and the same technique. You wanna make sure Nothing's, everything's overlapping in the order that it should be, so everything in the background should be on a lower layer, and then things in the foreground should be above those layers. And here I'm color correcting these tree ferns to make them look a little bit less yellow, a little bit more saturated green to match the overall aesthetic of the planting in the rendering. Same with these asparagus ferns, I'm gonna do the same thing. They're too green, so I wanna dull them up a bit. There we go. And 
here. Just have one more planter space to fill in. And use a bird of paradise just along the fence there. And once again, I'm rotating them, make them all a little bit different and unique. Just if one or two facing a different way will make a big difference. So here I'm deleting the shadow of the, the tree fern over the shrub because it's reading as flat. Also editing that will help. So you're just adding different miscellaneous shadows, pop things off. You don't have to add shadow for every single plant. If you have more time, you can add a lot more detail. But here I'm just doing it to the ones that are noticeable. Just doing some minor alterations where I can. And try to look back at the whole context of the rendering while you're doing it, just so you're constantly adjusting things, make sure everything looks good. If you're looking at super high end detail, just zoomed in all the time, you're not gonna get the full picture. You wanna know what this thing's gonna look like while you're working on it. So you don't have to make a big change later. Once again, just doing some dodge and burn on the ground plane, make things look good over in the overall picture. Some last minute edits, adding back some score lines in the line where they weren't before. Couldn't find where that layer was, so I ended up just filling it over with white. Nothing wrong with that. Also just cropping my view, didn't need all that excess paper space. Again, just dodge and burn and fill in the spots that don't look right. There's a lot of artistic license here. And adding faded back plant there to make, give a little sense of reflection. Minute touch ups. Adding shadow to the Cariota. I do adjust the uh, whole layout there. Add some more paper space on the left side to fit in that shadow. Also adding in a shadow to make it look like this isometric is kind of floating in this white space as its own thing. And adding, I'm going to add a dark outline to this whole design. Kind of gives it a cartoony feel, keeps all held together, but I want to send that back so it's not over the plant, so it's, the plants are actually over it. This is a nice graphic style, I think, that helps reinforce that it's a section cut over the design. And here I'm going to add in some people. I play around with different settings. Some of them don't look right, some of them do. Um, and I always end up editing last minute, so I ended up taking out this girl and another one, and then putting in one last one sitting on the bench wall. This one just didn't feel right. It wasn't really necessary. I like to get a lot of my figures from Skull Goober. And I also like ordinary figures. They have a lot more diverse selection. I believe this one that I'm working on right now, this figure PNG was from ordinary figures. So go check them out. A lot of cool free stuff there. Yeah, so that's my rendering. If you, I'm gonna come up with some more YouTube tutorials, either in Photoshop or hand uh, graphics. Um, please let me know in the comments how you like this tutorial and if you'd like to see more.